Hello and welcome to Dare to Shine when a woman invests in herself. I'm your host, Lydia, founder of Lydiana Coaching. And today, I feel so privileged to have two other powerful mompreneurs with me. She is Winnie Lee from the Language Tribe and Dawn Fu from Life Skills for Hope. So if it's anything that have we have in common, it's just two things. Number one, we are all mompreneurs. All of us, we have kids. All right. And the second thing is that all both all of us have three business, two businesses each. Okay, not three businesses. Yeah, two to businesses. come, right? <laughs> it's coming. It's yeah. coming all the way. <laughs> so this is really a testament that when a woman actually invests in herself, the time, the learning, and the growth in herself, she can do miraculous things. She's able to take care of the home. Okay, she's able to still um provide for the family. She has a passionate business. And she has all that energy for both her work and her family. And it all starts when a woman invests in herself. So this is what very, very powerful message which we love to send out to all of you where you're watching live and you're watching on replay. Get it that when a woman invests in herself, she creates a ripple effect to those around her. All right. So let's get it started. So... All right, so all proceeds to go towards Daughters of Tomorrow. If you are having any um, of, of, of the bundles or you actually donated, thank you so much on behalf of Daughters Tomorrow as well as on us because all of your donations go towards helping low-income women gain employment and that's such a worthy cause, right? So um, I will actually be speaking um, for a short training and then afterwards we will bring in the guest speakers to actually to share about how they actually invested in themselves, how it has changed their lives, all right, and how it has made them a better person in their own personal lives, whether it's a mom or a wife, we can hear it straight from the horse's mouth, what is the impact that a woman can bring when she dares, right? That's why the event is called Dare to Share, when she dares to take that step forward, she dares to be different, she dares to lead her family, this is what will happen. All right. So about my about myself, I have been in self-employed lifestyle since I was 24, eight years of financial advisor experience. And in quarter three, 2021, I created another income stream called coaching. So as seven clients, 40k, sing dollars to date, highest being 12k for six months. So that's pretty juicy. And by the end of 14 months, right, I actually booked my income ceiling when I was stuck for easily close to eight years, I could never break it through that 50 to 60K income because anything beyond 60 to 100, you have to put in a lot of hard work. You have to burn your weekends. You have to give up having um, time for yourself, give up shopping and all those things. I simply refuse to do that. Okay, So that is why I was stuck at this point and I could never go past that only until I started investing in myself, not one time, not two times, three times, and then the fourth time, right? Repeatedly investing in myself, going for the highest investment. And that was when I had that breakthrough of um, 100K in 14 months, all right? Um, I advocate, or rather what I was doing a lot was three-day work week. I have 48-hour no work weekends because we are moms who want to have it all big time, big money, business, and family. So why do we want to have it all? Simply because when you are experiencing life at its best, you get to experience everything. The freedom, the flow of life. And life is actually 360 degrees because money just is no good, no bad. What it does is that it just gives us that freedom, okay? That option to enjoy nice things, food, experiences and create beautiful memories with our loved ones and for me um if you follow me from insta store instagram i keep talking about how going to perth in august was such an amazing trip for our family and like in three months time we're going to another fan bam trip to korea so having money just gives you option to create your beautiful memories with loved ones. But even if not, it's about having that presence, that energy to be with them. And if you are like me, ambitious, right? Then yes, having it all is not just a wish, a maybe desire, 
but it's really the answer to living a rich life, a rich life full of experiences, full of emotion, going through that breakdowns, but also having that breakthroughs. On the other side, right, why do we not want to have it all? And I actually came from that space as well. As you know, I was stagnant uh, income for so long because I simply refused to give up time with my family, with my son and with my kids if I need to have more money. It was just an, a deal that, it was just a deal with the devil that I just refused to have that, right? And a lot of women also face this. If we want to have more career achievements, we need to give up our energy. So I always see that there's basically three types of women one is that she is, you know, um, earning so much money, but she has no time. She has no energy. She's working on weekends. And she has, um, she has to have that caregiving help from other people, okay? And she can't be there for kids as much as she want to. A second type is the woman who's really ambitious, but she stays stagnant because similarly, if she has to have more achievement, she's very ambitious. She's very capable. But in order to go for more, she has to give up something and she refuses. So she stays status quo. She stays same way in the between of, um, of that um, uh, middle management, a little bit of task, a little bit of responsibility, a little bit of good, happy money, but nothing more that takes her to the top when she has the potential to and of course the last one that you know because of fact that they don't want to give up the um the, the time that they have to put into work they completely stop working or they just go for a small little income when they have a lot of potential as well the more of the story is that if we want to have more of anything we are told by society that we need to give up something okay so what do we do okay it's either we always end up choosing. If we want to have money, we have to give up family. If we want to have family, we give up money, right? But what if there's a solution out of it? Okay, what if that there is a solution that takes you from what you have been doing to where you want to be? Okay, and taking that leap in between, as you can see, it is some. It is a place where you're going through that transformation. You don't have that safety net. You don't have. You're not being protected in any sense. You will go through a lot of fears, a lot of uncertainties. But that is exactly what you have to go through in order to be where you want to be. In order to have more money, but you want to have that freedom, you have to be a different version. Okay, You have to deal with money differently. You have to learn how to deal with time differently. Whether do you still see in lack or do you still see in abundance. right? Because the truth is that all of us, we like as humans, we are very used to doing the same thing over and over again. It's part of our programming. It feels safe. We feel safe in this community and this tribe, but you cannot expect a new result if you keep doing the same thing. So this is what I always see like a lot of people doing comfortable moves, you know, um, let's take an example. If let's say you have two types of women, one, um, they both know that they would like to go for that $500 bag. But that woman who's just going for comfortable moves, she just chooses to buy a $100 bag or she just chooses to buy an $80 bag, always finding a cheaper alternative and more things, hoping that it will give her that satisfaction of that $500 bag. You have that one version. And you also have another woman, on the other hand, she, she just eyes, she shoots and she scores. If the $500 bag is what she wants, she goes for it because she knows it will give her that level of comfort, that practical, that long-term relationship with her bag instead of having to keep changing out, right? So this is always what happens when a woman who actually knows and she dares to invest in herself, she always goes for the highest ticket and she knows because behind it is backed up with that confidence, that trust and that belief in herself. So when we actually choose to invest in ourselves, there's a whole lot list, all right? But all of them have varying degrees of success. And whatever method that you choose, you will see that there is a definite relationship between cost and level of success satisfaction, okay? Level of success satisfaction, meaning to say that um, you're looking at the speed, the efficiency, how accurate does it give you the results? And you realize that the, the higher the cost, okay, 
often the it comes more accurate results at a faster speed as well. So success satisfaction is made up of tangible and intangible ROI. What do I mean by that? Tangible ROI are the cherry on, on top of the cake. It is the clients, it's the money, it's that success that everybody sees on the outside. But what is being backed up behind that tangible outcome is all that confidence, that belief, that trust, that triumph bank, okay, because you have built in yourself in this programming that every time you conquer something, you keep going forward, you keep succeeding until it becomes ingrained, imprinted in your mind that I can do anything that I want to. You have developed that emotional and mental resilience and that is always the one that is carrying the weight of your next breakthrough. So you will see that those options like reading books, um, having webinars are often just tip of the iceberg. They Later on, I'll speak about it, but they always create only temporary change and they give you a moment of feel good. It's just like a sugar rush. It makes you feel energetic for that moment only to subside afterwards. So if you actually give a guess which has the highest success satisfaction, okay, and after I've tried everything on this list, Okay, um, no second guessing that finding a mentor is the most, um, it gives you the highest level of success, satisfaction in terms of accuracy, in terms of speed, and in terms of efficiency. Okay, why is that we actually have, and I have created this, this is what I call a self-investment hierarchy. Um, I think for those people who understand about the conscious and subconscious mind, you would have seen this iceberg a model before. And what you actually see on top is just the temporary change is what you feel on the outside. It doesn't require a lot of effort to do it. So there are things such as freebies, books, webinars, meeting people, having conversations. Taking, no, taking new group courses, okay? And they are often just temporary relief. They can give you that a mindset shift for only two weeks, only for you to find have to find another book. And this was what I experienced because I have been reading self-help books for um, since I was 16. And as time went by, I realized that I needed more books to keep that same level of satisfaction. It was like, it was like I was on drugs or something. <laughs> okay? And I realized then that what I actually needed afterwards was that, sub that shift in my unconscious mind. Because the unconscious mind actually controls 90% of the way you think, of the way you function in your daily life. Whatever that you see as, as a subconscious only just takes up 10% of your brain. So if you want to have completely different results, you got to have a permanent change to your way of living. you got to have somebody who inspires you, somebody modeling for you, somebody telling you that, hey, this lifestyle that you want, which is of effortless success, where you can be a mom, you can have money, you can have it all 100k, it exists and it's not just a unicorn, it's not just a rainbow that you have to find, it really exists. And when you work very closely with a private mentor who is number one aligned with you, who believes in your goals and who you resonate with because she has walked your path before, you accelerate your growth by so much more, which I'm sure um, Winnie and Dawn can also share about our own personal experience as well. Okay, because you actually cause a permanent change to the way you live. It's going to be so effortless. It's going to be your part of your programming. Okay, and the private mentorship is one area that a lot of people circulate around they try to find substitutes as what I said about that $500 back. They try to find a cheaper deal, go for group courses, go for free webinars until at one point they realize that if I want to go for that permanent change, I need to take that leap. So um, I talk about this a lot, the myth versus reality. Um, I love to use this picture because it, it was, I, I still remember those days where I was sitting in front of the desk from morning till night. Okay, I did, I wasn't married or I even had a kid. I was working so hard then. And I know my head so much back aches. My hand was aching because of the poor the computer setup. My my lower waist was working, it was pain also I was my um, going for massages which only were again temporary relief because I was working so long weekdays and weekends that was why I could never break through that beyond that 50 to 60k because if I have to go if I want to have more money I have to trade in like I don't know what else I would trade in like my my body and my soul and everything it was like a deal with the devil so so 
um, bring me to fast forward to today, reality for the eight hours no work weekend. So this weekend is just full of bonanza with my nephew. I'm going for a friend's birthday party and we're also going for sports class tomorrow. Three day work week while doing this on the other two days, facial massages, downtime and shopping. So the big question is, so what happened in between? All right, and if you actually have um access to my habit all bundle, I answer all of the secret recipe in my other masterclass. Um, secrets revealed. Um, the habit all hundred k mompreneur. So watch it, okay? Because the highest level investment happened. Okay, my very first investment, I did five k. I put in five k, and I got back five k back in one insurance sales three weeks later. Okay, and my second investment, I put in another 10.5. I this time round I set up my coaching business and I broke even two months later. And my third investment, I put in another 13,000. I made 37% more than what I usually do. Was I nervous? Sure. Was I fearful? Of course. Was I um was I bothered by what people say? Of course, nobody. All right, except in myself, I and my coach believed in whatever I was doing. Okay, and I just decided to move ahead. I don't need anybody's permission, I just need to give myself that permission. And the moral of the story came about when you invest in yourself, what you're essentially unleashing is the confidence, the belief, and the deep trust that you have in yourself. And back to that, um, that, that uh, one of the previous slides I mentioned, it creates a triumph bank. It creates, it brings you to that momentum where you know that you can do anything and you are like unstoppable. You become superhuman. <laughs> so last words about investing in yourself, always opt to go for permanent change because it gets you the fastest and sustainable results. Okay, short-term pain versus long-term gain. Okay, a lot of people like to measure the cost. Which one would you rather think about money or would you want to think about the success? Imagine if you have that permanent change, getting that investment that you put in will be so easy, right? And build a triumph bank. Okay, a triumph bank is what you need to keep conquering, not just in your work life, but triumphs in your personal life as well. Communication challenges with your partner, with your kids, how to be a better person, how to be a role model to you not know, to your colleagues, to the people around you. Okay, this is the this is really what happens when you choose to be the first, when you choose to invest in yourself. Okay, so for all of you um, who are watching this or you are watching this on replay, you have access to my Have It All bundle. Click on the respecting link to access the masterclass training will be for there to shine. Secrets revealed the Have It All 100K Mompreneur, which is an exclusive training app as well. I just recorded this afternoon and a complimentary 20-minute power call with me to gain clarity on next steps. Take note that there's TNCs inside. So, um, but whoever just, I really want to spread the message that when you choose to dare to invest in yourself, miracles happen. So success stories um, for the workshop, um, people have shared with me that I give very valuable free workshop, can't imagine the pearls of wisdom. And of course, um, this client actually turned out to be signed up with me one month later. And this was also my VA. So um, even when she was just working with me and uh, when we stopped working after that, she decided to set up her own coaching academy um, and uh, to teach, teach women around her um, the skill set and how to set up a VA business. And right now she has seven women who are paying her and who are learning the skill set from her as well. So really proud of one of my VAs. And of course, um, uh, it's again, you know, it's about modeling, it's about inspiring, it's about embodiment. That is why you choose to work with the highest level of investment, the private mentor. And don't just go for, you know, cheap deals and, you know, trying to find substitutes when you know that what you need that can take you the fastest and skyrocket your income, your potential, your growth. Okay, if it's that option, if it's that money that you have to put down, that alignment, then go do it, okay? So um, this is also one of my clients who said you are inspiring me a lot because she was somebody who was very exhausted and um, she realized that she had to um, she had to do a complete shift. So when she actually worked with me privately, she was my VIP client, she, she actually saw that, hey, this life of effortless success where things can be so easy, where you can be supported actually exists. 
Okay, and I want to emphasize that when you invest in yourself, it's actually a self-discovery journey. A lot of people tend to focus a lot on the end result. Oh, I want to have more money, more clients. If not, this, 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 this journey is a waste. No, it isn't. Because the every time when you are a better version of yourself yesterday, then that is worthy of celebration already so for her is when she went on this uh, journey of self-discovery you know moving and moving forward right always being a better version than who you are yesterday and finally from one of my client ex-clients say um uh, uh, thank you so much for everything and I always emphasize about the old versus new version because when I kept embodying that I kept seeing how I was no longer the old version um, uh, and I kept stepping the new version. It helped me to be um, a new version every day in all areas of my life. So that was what accelerated my growth. Okay, lastly, the complimentary 20-minute power call to gain clarity on your next steps. It is valid for the next seven days upon the receipt of bundle and it's only limited to first three slots. So if you click on the link, you'll be guided to my Calendly link where you can book a slot with me. So first three slots only. All right. And lastly, leave a love note. Go on to this bit.ly. Um, I would love to hear your feedback um, about how you feel this workshop has been. It will help me improve for my next round and many, many rounds, as well as a testament to um the message that you have uh, uh, have heard up through my sharing. All right. So that's um that's for my sharing and um right now we'll be having the guest speakers for don and winnie and we are going i'm really going to hear their stories we're here to hear from them as well their investment journey um how it has actually changed them and impacted them um, and made them a better person all right so i'm calling in winnie and don hello hi lydia Hello. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Lydia, for having us. <laughs> yes. So, um, Winnie, for yourself, you are having the language tribe and Dawn, you're having life skills for hope. So, starting with Winnie first, would you love to introduce about yourself? Hi, I'm Winnie, as uh, Lydia just mentioned. Um, I founded Language Tribe, so I'm actually an educator. Uh, but it, I, I didn't start off as an educator. I started off as a communications professional. So the other um, thing that I'm also doing is, uh, is my... Looks, this connection looks a bit unstable. You're right. okay. We can hear it's you. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's All right. okay. It's okay. It's good. Yeah. Because yeah. you're, fro you're froze for a while. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So, to continue. So, my the other thing that I was doing before being an educator is uh, communication. So, I'm actually doing... So, I would say that these two things are my true gifts. Um, But then I decided... Just, just to cut a long story short, um, a couple of years ago, before before um, COVID, um, I made a decision. I regretted that decision. Okay, mm. so and um the journey I think after that it was I I really went I was really really in a in a very dark space, okay. And having been it was quite quite bad. Um, I was crying a couple a couple of times a day. Um, quite very emotional, but I told myself that I need to do something about it, right? Mm. And then I made a decision to make a change. Okay. Um and that day, this is where I am. Decided to um set up language tribe, even though my husband has always been pushing me, encouraging me to uh, have a business. I always doubted myself. I always said that, hey, I always tell him, no, I cannot be a businesswoman. I don't have the skills to be a businesswoman. I don't have the acumen. I I con I constantly um doubted myself until that. I think it was last year, beginning of last year, where I decided, okay, I need to take a chance. Uh, take the chance to make a change because I cannot be in a dark space anymore because it's very clear that it's impacting right. my, my children as well and then um, that's when I decided to take the plunge and do things my way so that decision I think is very very important that decision to make that change um, okay. yourself um, yeah so I think that so since then to now it's been it's been a it's been a very good 
fulfilling journey. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and I think we can see that from the smile on your face. Like, yes, <laughs> from the radiance, right? No longer I, in the I, dark place. Yeah, yeah. I, I really like when you say it all starts from that powerful decision, right? Yeah. Mm. It really, like people, like some women, they can be stuck in it for days, months, in the dark space, years, even, you know, but it really all starts from that powerful decision when like, I make that conscious decision to, I had enough and I'm moving forward from here. Yeah, so I think I, I really like that part. So for Dawn, what about yourself? Introduce yourself. Okay, so yeah, thanks Lydia. Thanks for really for that sharing. Uh, so in short, I, I founded Life Skills for Hope uh, at the grand ripe age of 45. <laughs> okay, so I do a couple of things. I've spent uh, two and a half decades uh, doing education work, corporate communications, a little bit of counseling and coaching. So right now, when Lydia mentioned that we have two uh, businesses, I like to think of it as two pillars. So one part of it is as a corporate trainer and the other part is really as a coach, right? And I specialize in career and communication. So Life Skills for Hope is actually about just equipping moms with two pillars of life skills. The first one is actually about emotional mastery because I mean, like it or not, right? As women, as moms, we also recognize that everything that we go through, whether it's a stressful situation or a change from you know non-mom to mom or different stages of our kids' schooling life, I think Winnie can resonate with that, different stresses. So once we take care of the first pillar, which is just educating our emotions and regulating them, and then we get to expressing it in the second pillar of life skills, which is really about that confidence and self-expression, whether we can communicate at the workspace, you know, professionally to be taken seriously, as well as, you know, personally with our relationships, because it's also familiar to us, right? Sometimes we go into self-sacrificial mode. Everything is about the family you know, the kids, the hubby and all supporting them. So I always joke that my core business is supporting everyone's core business. But that's not it. But we all resonate with that. So then, you know, I, I like you all, both of you, so I have that passion for learning. And that's why I thought, you know, it would be good for me to start some plans in motion and also help other moms, right, in communicating and reclaiming their career confidence. So mm. that, in a nutshell, was why I decided to... Um, even though the future didn't look like it had anything uh, closely resembling what I wanted to do. So I thought, why not go out there and create that portfolio for myself? Mm. Which is what I did. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much. I love your introduction. Like you said, it was about um, helping other, other moms out there with the essential skill set. And definitely, yeah. like, we are always... Um, the first one to like sacrifice everything you have on the plate for the people around us, right? Yeah, automated. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, on the other hand, when we put um, I was okay, put ourselves first. When we when we choose to um prioritize ourselves first, we mm. realize that it actually energizes our family, energizes our kids, energizes the home, energizes our mm. husband, energizes the workplace. Okay, we are like that battery station. Okay? Mm. And if the battery station is running low, then um, everybody, you know, it, it just runs on like low battery. Okay, and somebody's going to snap at some point. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. So would you love to share also um, your investment journey and how that has actually changed you? Okay, so I'll, I will go uh, uh, take this. Um, I think when I decided to make that change, uh, to, uh, yeah, that, that decision, um, one question was, of course, how? How am I going to do it? Mm. Right? I, I don't know how to do it. Um, but then again, I thought, okay, never mind. Just go for it. All right? mm. So then um, I I've mean, decided that... Yeah. yeah, sorry? Yeah, so something I would like to stop there also is yeah. like whenever you want to take that big leap, there's going to have that big transformation you always have like fears and like voices yeah. like ah, right. yeah yeah definitely you have a lot of this fear like are you sure I mean and the decision that I made last uh last year was to leave a corporate job I right. mean most people would be thinking like oh corporate job safe right well kind of safe but um other than retrenchment <laughs> but you get your monthly pay you know and you then pandemic your... some more go and leave <laughs> yeah you know are you sure you want to leave like mm, oh yeah so but I felt that I needed to do this my way, right? And like what Lydia said, it's the kind of, okay, forget it. I had enough. Um, I'm just going to go for it. And I went for it. And one of the things that I felt, I mean, other than investing in, in classes to, to improve for myself, one of the things that I felt I really invested in was time. Mm. I think that time investment was very, very important because being in that corporate job was really quite toxic because 
being in the pandemic, right, it was like there's no distinction between work and family. Mm. So I was uh, uh, continuously working and working and spending a lot of very little time with the kids. And I thought, okay, enough is enough. I need to make sure that I have that time. And after a couple of months, I, I think right now I'm very happy because if you look at my calendar, or like sometimes I show my kids my calendar as well, <laughs> I look very busy. Like it's really crowded. But the difference is I'm happy being mm. doing this. Mm. It's fulfilling. Like it's the time is within my control. Mm. Like I make sure that I invest time for myself, right? To do it for self-love. Um, sometimes I'll go for massage, um, secretly away from the, don't tell the kids because then they'll start <laughs> following me. <laughs> like, yes, I want to go. No, no, stay at home, stay at home. Yeah, right, me um, time. Yeah, the me time. Or just sometimes just to go out for a walk or just you know go shopping. Um I factor that 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 time and yet at the same at the same time I make sure that you know I I, I have time I dedicate time for my business dedicate time for the children I mean my kids being one is in peer doing PSRE one is 10 there are a lot of um fetching chauffeuring a lot of all those right, responsibilities right. to do right so you a lot of times you I'll be in, in um doing my uh driving and I might be in a call but the thing is I'm happy doing it I, it, because in the car, I have time with them when previously mm. I didn't. Um, that time to ask things like, how are you? you know, how's, how's, how's school? You know, what do you do? How are you, how's your relationship with your friend? You know, that, that kind of time, even, even though it is very busy, but I have my time with my kids. I have my right. time for myself. And I can shift. The important thing is I can shift my time around. If something doesn't work, I shifted around mm. so time is really in my control so that mm. investment in in finding out how you know in learning how to control my time mm. learning how to manage my time I think that was very very important mm. to me and that really really helped me yeah I mean it also feels like that that confidence right that trust that belief in yourself also skyrocketed mm -hmm. and like with that like I feel like a woman's abilities is really like superhuman, you know, at, at its core. It's just that we have all these fear, doubts and society perceptions and all that that actually shrinks us. But like if we really have that triumph bank, that confidence, we really can do really amazing right, things. Right. And, mm. and yeah, one thing also like for Winnie, um, I would love to ask how has that, you know, positively, how has your presence really positively impacted your relationship with your kids? I think, very, I think it was very, very positive. Like my, my son, um now will always wait for me if I if, if I'm out for example like last night uh, I have a relative who, who passed away so we, I went to awake and I told him beforehand I said um I'm gonna be late can you just go and sleep because he will wait for me he he likes me to read a book to him every <laughs> night so last night he waited for me <laughs> but being a boy I asked him, hey, did you wake up, wait up for me? He'll say, no, no, I didn't. No, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, you can see from him, his behavior is like he did. No. So it's that kind of relationship that you feel like, okay, even after a whole day, if I'm out for my work or if I'm out um, doing things and I tell him I'm late, he, he still craves that, that um, time with me. That time at night is our time. So mm, I think that was, nice. I think one year ago, I, I think I wouldn't have had that. They didn't have that previously. No, we had, I had, I had that, but it wasn't that close, close. I think. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, kids, we are, kids are like, um, they, they can sense the energy, they can sense the presence when you're fully with them. And re when it shows up um, re very reciprocal, like, I think it can really move us to tears and then whatever that we are doing is worth it. So, yeah, so worth it's, it. it's really beautiful. And um, like what you said, like, um, our son is like our past lover. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All of us have sons here. Yeah. Yeah, we do, huh? Okay, interesting. Okay, all right. So Don, what about yourself? I I it's a beautiful story. Thank you, Dwini. And yeah, uh, for Don, yes, let's hear for you uh, for you as well. I think the the decision to invest, um, for me, um, I kept hearing these F words. Okay, you're probably thinking why F words. So I like to be a little bit irreverent huh? and I'm coming out with this F word Fridays uh, on, on, uh, for my coaching as well because I have an affinity with the words for various reasons. Now, when you look in, in terms of investing to learn, very often the first question many people ask is where am I going to get the money? It's the finances. And I'll, I'll just 
like to share from personal experience that of course money doesn't come easy for everyone right and the, probably the way that we're raised uh, I definitely started out with more of that mentality of lack it was really quite tough so if you tell me you know to pay to attend something I'll be are you sure is this coach worth it is this time worth it are they gonna you know are they like credible and worth that so to just give you a, a very short illustration I remember having worked for an organization for a while and I had been very keen to improve my craft, right, in a certain area of specialization. So, uh, and you know how it is with corporates, you're all tagged with a certain learning budget. So you can make use of that budget to go for training, right? So I, I actually zoned in on, uh, zoomed in, sorry, on one um, uh, modality, shall we say, and I asked to be trained in that area. And the result or, or the request was turned down simply because I was too junior. So in my oh, mind, too, right, yeah. I, I felt, uh, yeah, so uh, all the other F words came out, but I shall not say them here. But uh, in my mind, I was not going to let that stop me, okay, in investing in myself. And But I, I didn't have or I didn't want to part with the six to $8,000 then. Uh, and I then, you know, I had to get creative with, with that. So what does that mean? Just because that door was closed, right, I could look into the future. And think about a couple of things that I wanted to do that I'll get there someday. I'll pay my own way through and get, you know, certified and do that. But meanwhile, how can I get creative and find out more about this space? So I started reading up and I started looking for people around my, my network. I went on LinkedIn. I found people who were certified, right? Who had just attended that and they were very eager to talk to me about it. Okay. So I, I met up with them, connected. I did my download and I started practicing. So to me, just because I wasn't certified or going through formal training was not going to stop me from trying that method in my work because it comes with practice mm. okay so fast forward three years later uh, i actually uh, managed to meet someone who's a mentor and a coach who was so generous and she was doing so well in her practice that she actually told me you can pay me in whatever mode you like whenever right so that was when i took it upon myself it was like a dream come true ladies you know and so you talk about the finances the future that the envisioning that i had i wasn't going to let that closed door be my failure mm. i was just going to push past that and uh, I love to learn. Mm. You know? So when I learned that, I committed full weekends uh, for three months and we know what it's like, right? Weekends are so precious, right? So that to me was the epitome of, you talk about your time, like, like what many, uh, we need mentioned, right? The investment in our energy, the resources. And of course, I kept thinking, am I going to be able to afford this? Uh, but then comes that creativity. Yeah. I had to then think, how can I get my way on their resources? And here was someone who was willing to, to give me that chance. So, I mean, I could have taken 10 months to pay back the thousands, right? But I made it a point to envision it and go like, I know I'm going to pay this up in three months, mm. right? You know, and, and even though I, I knew I could, uh, as in I could extend it, right, to infinity, <laughs> but I didn't want to because I knew that this was just another chapter. Mm. So, I think that was a very powerful, uh, to me, a story that I recall because we're not going to let anything stop us, right? Mm. We're moms who are wise and we're going to knock down doors and we're going to get there because yes. we have done it. I really love it. I a lot of like um you know they they range like whether it's that like really no money or even the one who's earning a lot they always say oh I um I don't want to spend this on myself yes. oh I rather use the money to spend on my kids education or like for my family trip you right. know they putting their own learning um supporting their own growth on the back burner mm. I always think that that is such a such a it's such a pity because like they have so much more potential and the growth again like I mean the uh in the slides I mentioned is giving ourselves that permission, right right yeah. yeah giving ourselves that permission that we deserve this and being fully confident that I know that if after I go through this whatever learning that you also mm -hmm. went right you will become so much better for Winnie as well you invested mm -hmm. you have you are so you have so much more energy to give to everybody around you right your self-care, your family, for your kids, your business. And because of that, you show up so much differently as compared to the past. So right. I think um, it's really, ah, yeah, how, how beautiful when we choose to invest in ourselves. First. <laughs> Definitely. And, and I and I um resonate with what you said just now about us always like um, investing in our kids first because that's what I did before. Like, oh, okay. Okay, got to go for class. Oh, buy toys. Oh, buy this, buy books. You know, it's always them first mm. until I, I, I realized that, you know, that change that when I made the decision to change, it's not just about setting that business, but it's also about changing myself mm. and, and um, learning, right? And making sure that my energy is always kept positive so that I can positively impact 
the people around me, my mm. kids. So yeah, and I think it's been good so far. Mm. Like I'm teaching my my daughter like my uh, meditation. Mm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but, you yeah, but but quite funny because she being at primary uh doing PSLE, she's kind of pre-teens, right? So every time I when I go, okay, come, let's sit down and have uh meditation, and she'll roll her eyes. I give that. Uh, again <laughs> so, yeah. but but doesn't matter you know it's okay the important thing is I teach her the skill so that mm. she is able to use it tap on it whenever she needs it mm. yeah it's about being that positive role model right mm. what kind of model do you want for your kids if it's like you're always like sacrificing yourself putting yourself on the back burner always other people first your kids will grow up looking at that and they will end up doing and running the show like that for, yeah. for their for um in their future and like that's no goal like you know self sacrificial mm-hmm. is no goal so yeah um yeah all right so anything else to add before we go to the question segment I think just a very quick um yeah addition so after the investment was done and and um I only realized this after looking back in reflection right that uh within um a hundred working days of me having left my previous job. And I only did that because I wanted to complement what I had for my career with my family's life stage. Mm. I think that's very important. And a lot of moms are looking for that. Not, not because we want an easy way out because it's got to be tougher actually sometimes spending more time at home. Uh, I think, you know, you all will, will understand handling more things. So I've seen a lot of progress in that area. So mm. I, I'm really thankful for that. So for example, I've had more like uh, income streams opening up and channels that I've never thought before. Uh, in fact, up to as many as five, you know, so that's a very significant number for me. And uh, to me, it's not about boasting in itself because I could never see this coming. Mm-hmm. But I think it's having that faith, right, to be able to understand also that moving forward, I mean, with the family first and centered, a lot of decisions then, you know, that had to revolve around it actually paid off more than I can imagine. Mm. Uh, so that was something that I was really thankful for. Even in my training business, being able to command rates that I never thought I could before. I think that yeah. was really an up to five times more. So you know, to me, that was an awakening of a moment uh, that imagine if I had not done that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's um, really that confidence, that belief yeah. in yourself that skyrocketed yeah. with your yeah. investment. So, yeah. wow, okay. beautiful, Thanks. beautiful story to hear because like many women, they always think that, oh, if I stop my, my top of my top of <laughs> now I have zero income. But no, like for you, it's like whoosh, a rush of various income streams and opportunities and being seen for your potential by so many people okay. and, and if i could add just one just one point i think beginning um i, I mentioned that um, a couple of years ago i made a decision that i regretted yeah. and upon reflection um the past couple of months and i i realized that actually you know so previously i always kept thinking oh regret 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 it's something that i i um didn't like you know mm. i didn't mm. fully um integrate but recently um, I had that change of mindset I felt mm. actually if that regret if I didn't make that regretful decision I wouldn't be where I am right now today mm. so that the, so having that change that flip in that mindset that eye-opening change like oh okay actually that reg- yes it was a decision that I regretted Wonderful. but actually it did me good I'm glad I made that regretful decision actually yeah so I think that having sometimes having that uh, that um um, mindset is fine because with time you'll realize that actually you you wouldn't be where you are if you hadn't made Lots that decision that, right? yeah. yes, yes. I, I love it appreciating thing. our breakdowns as much as our breakthroughs yes. <laughs> indeed okay. okay all right so um we have uh, two questions um from the oh wait let me try to find we have two questions for, I can't buy, I don't want to share. Let me see. Okay. Yeah, no, I think the first one uh, that Winnie, uh, we, what was that that we saw just now was about how do you know or how do you start setting up a business, uh, right? All right, yes. Yeah. So the second one you... was, yeah, we'll, we'll do the first one first. Winnie, maybe? Yeah. How did I set up a business? Um, <laughs> well, just set it up. <laughs> just set it up. Yeah, just set it up because, um, I think there is no, I mean, you can, if you go online, you'll have all this, this is how you do your, do your, set up a business, first step, you do this, you must do a business plan, you must do this, this, this. I'm like, mm-hmm. seriously, I don't have time to do all that. Um, so I just, I just went with, I love that. with what I felt. I mean, I, 
I mean, one of the things that when I decided to start my business, one of the things that I wanted to do was to make a purposeful impact. I mean, I'm in the education business and I teach um, um, youths, children and youths. And that was my very, from the very beginning, that was my purpose, right? That was my mission to have to make a purposeful impact to children and to, to youths in terms of language, English language. So I just thought, let, let me just go out and look for and see if I can get some students. And actually, I went to get students first. Um, of course, I had my the, the language tribe, uh, the name in mind, but I went out to get students first before I actually said, okay, um, go and set up my business, go and uh, create website or IG. You know, I did, I got the students first before, um, before actually setting up the so called setting up the business because so it wasn't like, like oh I have this and everything everything is all in nice places no no definitely not because I mean because the thing is that I felt the core the core the, my core business is teaching students so why don't I just go out and get the students first because that's my business already mm. right um so it's not like actually setting up the website setting up this setting up that that's not my business mm. but my business is coaching the students yeah so 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 by looking for students i'm a, i've already set up the business so it's like well I, what i always say it's not about having that you know perfect plan laid out from step one to step ten but so just going that next step and then the next step, and then just next step. And that's really what all you need um, for, for, she asked this question, how to succeed in setting up business? Um, and what time of business is suitable? Um, would you like to take that question as well? I think it's the type of business is what is something that you like to do, right? Like for me, um, education is something that I'm passionate about, right? Um, so hence, if since education is something that I'm passionate about, I wanted to teach um, kids. I wanted to teach youths. Hence, I went that way. I think it's when you set up a business, it's not really not just a business. It's really doing something that you're passionate about. And once you're able to do something that you're passionate about, then you have to drive to make your business even better. Mm. So I think it's about, it's not just like, oh, you know, I, oh, I think there was a period of time where everybody was going on to Amazon to sell things, right? It's not, it's not about, oh, everybody is doing that. I will go and do that and I go and set up a business. But that may not be something to, like, you enjoy doing. So how are you going to find, if that's not something that you enjoy doing, how are you going to find the drive? If something goes wrong or, or there's a challenge, how are you going to find the drive to, to push through? Mm. But if your business is about something you're passionate about, then it's easier for you to push through no matter what. And it's easy for you to find inspiration mm. if you are doing, say, like writing content or if you are writing um, Instagram stories or, or whichever. You, it's easy for you to find, find inspiration to communicate to your potential customers. Yeah, so, so that's what I that's what I found. It's not so much a business, but is really doing what you like to do. Yeah, absolutely. Like, and in fact, if anything that we love, we have insatiable amount of passion, motivation. Like what you said, we have to make it work. So, um, something very relevant for a career coach here. What type of work it can provide the best work life balance? That's a big one. Um, I remember when I was a very young, um. Well, I would say executive, right? I was asked this question at an interview. How do you make sure that you have work-life balance? So I thought it was very strange that, you know, the big boss was asking me that. And before, what was stranger was she didn't wait for me to answer. She said this, you should always work for a work-life balance. So when I looked at her, I'm thinking to myself, what does that mean, right? Uh, but the thing is, this is really subject to interpretation because this is a question that is tied very closely to what we value in life. What do I mean by that? So in some of the career coaching that we've seen so far, um, let's say if you're working with someone whose main concern maybe for the next 12 months is to bring in as much income as possible. So would you advise someone like that to go for a, a, a role where you know the salary is fixed or maybe with something that has a commission component so that he or she can then get you know whatever is performance related for the income because that works for him in the short or the midterm goal. Okay, then what do you value? Right. And that work-life balance will materialize according to what you have decided to anchor as your center. Okay, To some people, uh, it's, it's very relevant now because this term quiet quitting, which totally annoys me, has been surfacing quite a lot, right? Where you get by under the radar, you don't do anything, but you survive. And you know what? 
ladies, you and I have known people like that who have stayed in an organization for decades, right? And to them, that is the work-life balance, mm. okay? To some others, right, my work-life balance is I want travel. Now that the pandemic is, you know, settled down, does have settled, I want to do that. So whatever that balance is, I encourage you to think about it. Maybe use a metaphor, an analogy of something that works for you. For some people, it's a seesaw. Okay, for some others, it can be longer ranging, right? Depending on, keep the visual in mind of what you want to achieve for yourself and it will change, right? So um, again, before I became a mom, my work-life balance, what balance? Okay, I was working in the media industry. Weekends are when we come to life because that's where the events are situated. Uh, basically, every event that we do is targeted on Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays. My family hardly saw me, All right? So then after a decade, I asked myself, do I really want to do this? And what am I going to do? Piggyback my, my kid with me when I go for events. Not the best combination, right? You can get with, <laughs> with that. So it depends on the life stage that you're in as well. Mm. But the fact that you're seeking to ask that question, I would think and imagine that something needs to be addressed, right? Probably at the surf that surface, like what exactly is it that's not making you feel like you have achieved that balance? And then <clears throat> put it in place. It's the same thing that like we always joke, right, internally with my friends. Do you spend your weekends running away from the life that you hate or creating the life that you love? Oh, love it. Yeah, right? But if you think about it, I'm like, wow, that blew my mind because it's like, yeah. And so now, I mean, I know among the three of us, like, we don't work weekends, right, as much as we can. But at most, if I could, if my client needs me or what, I'll do like once a month because I'm prepared to, for that flexibility because that's life. <laughs> yeah. So that balance will seek and materialize in and when your life stage determines and your values dictate. So nobody can tell you what should that balance look like for you. Yeah. That would be my two cents. Wow. Yes. So what a lovely answer. We <laughs> live for a career coach. <laughs> I think I like I like your quote, the one that you said just that was powerful. Yeah, I read yeah. it from somewhere, Winnie, and it, it really I, I loved it so much because yeah, was... you know how it is, right? And then for some of us our parents, I recognize that like, I'm so tired, I cannot do with weekends because the kids are home. You know, and then after Monday, it's like, wow, you need a yeah. weekend to get over the weekend. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. also about setting boundaries, isn't it, when it comes yeah. to work life balance? Yeah. yeah. And, and it's so true. Like, we see a lot of people, right? Like, oh, like, um, when Monday starts, they, they really dread it, and then they're just counting down the way until Friday. And then Friday yeah. is just a weekend. And then afterwards, Monday, it's just like, I, I think like work is something that you have to enjoy. If not, you're mm-hmm. spending 80% of your time on something that you don't like. That's just miserable. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. misery. <laughs> <laughs> okay and the last question uh, which either one of you can also reflect how do I always know that I'm moving towards the right direction I, I wonder no because I ask myself yeah. that question all the time. <laughs> yes but I, I think yeah right really so yeah. the great thing is that you're we're asking that question mm-hmm. and we are constantly not just sitting on our laurels thinking that we've got the formula right because nobody gets it right at least you know not in the first um, it shows that attitude behind you know that wanting to to continue in the business and to do it right and tweaking because yeah. um yeah if not if we're so disconnected from let's say the the, the market or the client or the work that we do the passion mm. like what we said you know it's not the business then we're not really going to know what's out there are we right yeah that's, i mean that that's my step at it really yeah. we need what about you how do you how do you answer the question how do i always know that i'm moving the work the right direction i think I think it's also about, you know, um, do you think you are impacting people, mm-hmm. um, your clients, your customers? I think if you feel that you are impacting them um, positively, um, then I think you are moving in the right direction. Mm-hmm. How your communication with, mm-hmm. with, your, with, with your clients, I think um, that is what says a lot. Mm. and how your clients respond to you that connectedness between yourself Beautiful. and your yeah. clients right yeah. um i think if you, that that connectedness you, is there that impact is there then you'll know that yeah i'm doing the right thing mm. and this is the direction mm. i am going towards mm. this is the this is the direction that i want to go but also at the same time knowing that we are constantly learning like even if a client is not happy right but mm. you know other clients are happy but one, one client is not happy but five clients are happy doesn't matter let's learn f- from this one client who's not happy right. why 
Mm. Why is it that, you know, the person is, is not happy, you know, and try to improve on it. And then, but at the end of the day, if you have a lot of clients who are, who are positive, who are signing up with you, then I think, or, or at least you're, you have a lot of positive feedback, then I think you're moving in the right direction. Mm. But knowing that we are constantly learning, constantly improving where we are. I mean, I believe that where I am today, where my business is today, maybe five, ten years down the road, it will be something different. Mm-hmm. So I can't say that this journey, the direction that I'm going, is going to be the same for the next 20 years. It might change along the way. So I think we need to be, as, as entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, we need to be open um, for that possibility mm-hmm. and open to learn, open for change, open to accept and adapt. I think, in, I think the pandemic has taught us that we really need to be adaptable yeah. and flexible anytime to, to change if we need to. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah, I accept and adapt. I also yeah, like what um you don you said at the start, like even I also asked myself that question. <laughs> yeah, because it's only I don't think there will ever be like an end point, mm-hmm. uh, especially on this road of entrepreneurship. There will ever be a point where like, okay, I know everything and I've done enough. It is always about learning new things and like what I said, trying self-discovery as well. Mm. So um, moving towards the right direction, as you said, has to be at, at that point, what is connected to you. If the connection is there, you're on the right track. But if you're disconnected, whether your values is not um, reflected in your job or um, you're sacrificing some part of life that you actually value, then that is something that is worth taking a pause to, to, right. to, to re-look into. And um, again, I also mentioned that when you... we what keeps us moving, I definitely, um, especially on this road of uh, self-discovery, we really don't know what it's going to be like one year later, two years later, or much less five or ten years later. But it's like walking with you know blinders on. But what I feel can really guide someone is that confidence, is that belief and that trust in yourself. Which, again, it comes in when you have built that triumph bank, you have uh, gone through so many confidence hoops to know that whatever you're doing, you will land somewhere, some how the met the point is that you know you won't die on the streets yeah so um I, I i i think that will be a great answer for this question and okay. if i can add one yeah. what there's yeah, one yeah. thing I, I i like to believe i i mean you're talking about following that journey right it's about having the faith isn't it and there's one thing i always believe in is the moment you lose the faith you have lost half the battle and I think it's very, it's a very, that's it's a constant reminder to myself. And I think, you know, who, whoever is watching this and watching the replay, it, I think you, it's something, what, faith is so, such, such an important value to push us, to drive us. Mm. If we lose that, then, you know, really, literally, we will lose half the battle, yeah. right? Because we don't yep. have any more drive to continue. Love yes. it, love it. Absolutely. All right. So, um, yeah. So, uh, any, things um to add before we can close the event um no, yeah good. all right i love our conversation oh so so much heart yeah. and, and flow to it okay it can uh, go as a separate <laughs> <laughs> so so deep okay so i'm just doing a little bit of a shout out for both winnie and dawn so um dm for hope okay um it will be a 20 minute call for career confidence for dawn Okay, so you actually can have this 20 minutes to speak to her about your career direction, um, reorientating your goals, okay? Because it's um it's always it's always um so important that our values at that moment, at that life stage actually aligns with whatever work that we are doing. Okay. And um DM shine in language for a 20 minute chat with Winnie in helping your child gain clarity and confidence in English. Oh, I love it. Clarity and confidence. <laughs> Okay, um, so we've come to the end of the event. Again, leave a love note um, on my bit.ly, bit.ly slash leave love note to, um, so uh, you can note, leave testimonials for how you find the workshop. Oh, that's so sweet. Yes, me too. As let me drop a heart. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, yes, yeah, that's the end of the event. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Lydia. Thank you, Lydia. Thank you, Lydia. Thank, Thank, you, Lydia. You, Lydia. Thank you. you. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Can we take a photo, please? Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> let, me, let me do a screen share. I mean, let me do a... Okay, all smile with us. Maybe one, two, three. All right. Let me just snap this. Okay. 
Okay, thank you. Thank Bye you bye. so much. Take care. Bye, bye ladies.